So many people think of life as um, a game. What are the things you should do? What is your next movement? Where's your next decision? What should your strategy be? What will your opponent do? And so on and so forth. We actually have someone who understands game theory, period. <laughs> and I would love to see his perspective on life. Kostis Deskalakis. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, this has not been prepared because uh, <laughs> I only agreed to this a few, you know, like a few minutes ago. So I'm a colleague of Manolis, and uh, uh, that has been a pleasure. So happy birthday. I hope you continue uh, being as energetic as you are and sort of like pushing us also to uh, be more energetic. Um, so, uh, so my research is uh, uh, in computer science and in particular on the mathematical aspects of it. So, um, and um, uh, mathematics has uh, a type of gravity. So you're striving for absolute uh, truths. And uh, yeah, so that gravity sometimes is, uh, you know, can, can hold you back. So, uh, so a lot of my research has to do with uh, complexity theory and computation. Uh, so and the, what that says about uh, uh, interaction between humans, strategic humans, um, interactions between humans and their environment, and also about how uh, to make sense of randomness, uh, how to... Uh, uh, derive knowledge from uh, complex observations. And sort of like one of the uh, uh, issues there, and uh, Veronica g uh, gave a good uh, explanation of it uh, in her uh, sort of like historical overview of, of AI, and certainly is, is one of the, uh, I think, challenges of human uh, endeavor these days, is how to make sense of uh, observations that are so complex and so high dimensional that uh, uh, pose extreme challenges in extracting uh, provably, uh, rigorously extracting meaning from them. So, um, uh, in, in particular, mathematically speaking, uh, if you're looking at high dimensional complex observations, you, you, basically you cannot extract uh, pro provable meaning out of those observations unless you, unless you make assumptions. So basically what mathematics is telling us is that uh, all the knowledge that basically we have about complex phenomena, whether these phenomena occur in the social uh, systems or uh, biological systems um, um, or, or the universe from observations of the sky, all, this, all, all, this, all these observations are, are so high dimensional that we cannot actually extract meaning from, from them. Um, uh, uh, unless we make assumptions about what we're observing, okay? So everything we know is under assumptions, okay? So it's important to know our limitations. Uh, and, you know, knowing our limitations, we have to embrace this lack of certainty. We're not, not going to find certainty. Uh, embrace this lack of, of certainty and find a purpose in, in, in our life. So uh, when Manolis asked me to give a talk, I don't know, a couple of weeks, a week ago or so, I'm like, you know, no way. I mean, I have, nothing, I have no idea what's the meaning of life. In fact, you know, like... Uh, you know, my mathematical perspective on the complexity of computation and, the, you know, uh, on high dimensional probability, you know, it's, it's, like, it's you know, it, in fact, it's, a, it's, a, it's holding me back from discovering meaning, okay? So, um, uh, yeah. but, um, you know, then I saw him on Thursday, I saw him on fac in faculty lunch, and he's like, uh, Kostas, are you giving a talk? And I'm like, well... Let me think about it. Okay, so I, I still have five days to figure it out. Okay, if I figure out the meaning of life in five days, I'm going to give a talk. Uh, so I, I didn't sign up, but you know, like uh, when he asked me earlier to, uh, to say something, you know, and inspired by everything that has been said, I, I thought about a, a nice anecdote uh, from Aristotle. Uh, it's the uh, Heraclitus anecdote, and it's described. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, in Aristotle's uh, The Partibus Animalium, uh, which is basically a small, t uh, it's a treatise that is considered to be protreptic, okay, so, so suggesting uh, the study of animals, okay. Now, in this, in this treatise, Aristotle also studies uh, uh, small animals that, uh, uh, you know, he talks about sponges and snails and uh, grubs and other humble creatures, uh, which are, you know, so even displeasing to look at. Um, so Aristotle 
tries to make a point about why it makes sense to study these things. And he says the following anecdote about Heraclitus. So he says, so one must not be childishly repelled by the examination of humbler animals. For in all things of nature, there is something wonderful. Uh, and just as Heraclitus is said to have spoken to the visitors who wanted to meet him and who stopped uh, as they were approaching, when they saw him warming himself by the oven. Okay? So they go to see Heraclitus and he's by the oven warming his hands. Uh, so, uh, so he urged them to come in without fear, for there were gods there too. In Greek, in gar ke daftha theus. So one must approach the inquiry about each animal without aversion, since in all of them there is something natural and beautiful. And that's, that's what I want to say. Wow. Happy birthday. <laughs>